Hello everyone, my brothers and sisters. Very important lesson for each and every one of us today as we gather around together. Now, before I have my coffee and you let me know in the comment box, what are you going to share with PD this morning? What are you having for breakfast? I want to remind everyone that Jesus loved the homeless. He loved the poor, the orphans, and the widows, and he spoke of them often. A lot of us today are wondering, are we lacking in some area? We want to be pleasing to God. We want to be a follower of Yeshua. And we want to make sure that we don't leave any stone unturned. Not much has changed since 2,000 years ago. Not much has changed today. Let me take you to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 19. And we're going to begin at verse 16 because there is an attack, an all-out war on homelessness, on the poor, the orphans, and the widows today that Jesus loved so much. The elite, the powers that be, those that are pulling together this new world order, this one world evil religion, the Antichrist system, their attack right now is against the homeless because they know that those born again Christians that have the power and ability to make a difference are not going to do anything. No one is coming to their rescue. Let me take you to the book of Matthew. Chapter 19. I'm going to begin at verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life. Now Jesus knew already that this man knew that he was lacking in some area of his faith. He also knew that this man had all the material things one could desire of this world. Gold, rubies, onyx stone, emeralds, excessive wealth. Let's go to verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And Jesus also knew that this man, even though he had all the material possessions and money and wealth, did his best to ensure that he would have eternal life. And he followed all of the commandments. But he knew there was something lacking. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? you got to remember, let's go back. And Jesus said why, unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. This is Jesus speaking. He saith unto him, Which, Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now the young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He could not let go of the material things and his wealth and his money. His love of money was greater than his love of his brother or sister. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of, of God. Not much has changed since Jesus walked the earth 2,000 years ago. I want to share a, a true story with you that uh, my grandmother would uh, relate to my brother and sister and I as we were growing up. There was a time my grandmother and mother owned a restaurant in Lincoln Park, Michigan, it was off of 4th Street on Southfield, uh, Southfield Road. It's called J&M. My mother's name was Joyce. My grandmother's name was Mildred. And they were doing pretty well with their business. 
Now, we were always poor. My grandmother's side of the family and my mom's. But my grandmother's sisters and brothers were what we would call today well-off Christians, well-to-do, not hurting for the material things of this world. They had the cars and the possessions and the, the big houses and the bank accounts. And they had good jobs. So they were blessed in that aspect. My mother became very sick. And one thing led to the other, the, the mounting medical bills. My grandmother had to shut the restaurant down. My mother couldn't work anymore to take care of my mom. They owned a home in Lincoln Park, and I have vague memories of this home. And um, they were $500 away from owning that home outright. The bank was going to take the home. They were going to repossess the home for $500. Now, my grandmother's sister, my uh, mother's aunt, was well off. She was an executive secretary for back then J.L. Hudson and Company. My grandmother asked her, could you please loan us $500 to save our home? And she was a Christian, born again Christian, went to church every Sunday, got all decked out, read her Bible every day, but she couldn't part with her money and she told my grandmother no. So they lost a home. We were just young children, young babies. We had nowhere to go. The same aunt, after my mother and grandmother lost their home, and we were basically on the street, gave $500 to rent a home in River Rouge on Division Street. Well, what a name. Division Street, where I grew up. We see that today, brothers and sisters. Let me have my coffee. Hold on. The reason the homeless are being singled out today is because those that are in power know that the ones who are able, financially able, to make a difference and to help, they're not coming to the aid or to the rescue of the homeless. Born again brothers and sisters who are not into the material things of this world, who don't have the big executive jobs and in the sales and in marketing and, and big advertising agencies that they work for. They do what they can. But the ones that are born again that can make a difference, they don't. Look at the prosperity preachers. Look at the Benny Hens and the uh, Joel Osteens. Look at Joel Osteen. One weekend, one weekend's offerings come up missing. Eight hundred thousand dollars. Now they're not they're not preying on the rich born again Christians with their big house and a big executive and advertising jobs because they're not going to let go of that money. They're not going to part with that. They are bringing in the masses of brothers and sisters who are uh, on limited incomes, fixed incomes, uh, and are telling them how blessed they are, how good you are how wonderful you are, and it's all about you. Tickling their ears and telling them the feel-good gospel. And they write what little money they have, the Social Security. They give their Social Security as an offering or their retirements. Because the rich are not going to. The rich born-again Christians are, are lacking somewhere. The ones that could make a difference. I just wanted to share that with all of you this morning. You know, there are those that can make a difference, that will give to non-Christians or non-Christian charities and organizations. There are those that are in need of maybe losing their home. And a well-to-do brother or sister will just say, I'll pray for you. That same brother or sister will turn around and write a check for $10,000. Because someone's having a little bit of a struggle while they're living in their million-dollar home with their lavish lifestyle. because they. Face a little stumbling block. Write a check for ten grand. What to help a brother or a sister save their home? All you're going to get is prayer. I love you all. I just hope this is some lesson that we can all learn from today. Things haven't changed in two thousand years. Um, ministry announcements: nothing to report on. There have been no offerings uh, that have come into the ministry. 
but I'm going to praise him today. Father God has blessed this ministry, and he's moving, moving, moving this ministry. I love you all. If you feel led to give, if you feel led to give to the ministry, I'll put the link below. God bless.